Prince William, the Queen of England. You? That's right, you too can wear the crown and join the illustrious ranks of royalty. Sorry, Lord, but we can all be royals. That's a music reference. Here's how you're gonna become royalty. This is Epic Cow 2. The concept of royalty has existed since prehistory, where chiefs ruled over small, insulated tribes. As history progressed, monarchy, a system of government where a royal family rules the country, spread throughout the world. And while monarchies gave way to democracy, eventually, some still exist, such as Great Britain, Thailand, and Japan, which has the oldest monarchy in the world. That's a fact! Come up with a graphic for that. That's a fact! European monarchy started in the 9th century with a form of government called feudalism. In feudalism, individuals who either conquered or purchased vast amounts of land were called lords. These lords amassed so much wealth, power, and land that it was impossible for them to control at all. The solution was to give some of the land away to vassals, people who would watch over and protect the land while remaining subservient to the lord. When these vassals died, their title and duties such as maintaining an army or collecting taxes were passed down to their children. Some of these vassals became so powerful that they needed to have vassals of their own, and some of those vassals needed vassals of their own, creating this complicated web of royal lineage that exists to this day. If you weren't lucky enough to be born a royal, how do you become one? The simplest way is through marriage. There have been a lot of commoners, like me, who have married into royalty. Not like me! That's a fact! Princess Diana, Grace Kelly, and Kate Middleton were all commoners who became royal by marriage, as were Olympic swimmer Charlene Lynette Woodstock and actor Casper Van Dien. You know, that guy from Starship Troopers? Michael Ironside is in that movie. That He's awesome. And Doogie Howser's in that movie. You should watch that movie. It's like bad on the best levels. It's actually not bad, it's just good. Screw you, guy that doesn't like it. If you're looking to marry someone who's close in succession to the throne, try cozying up to Princess Siravanavari Naranata, this name of Thailand, or Prince Wenzelslaus of Liechtenstein, aka Vince the Prince. But there are some problems with marrying into royalty, namely, you have to convince them to marry. And while you can increase your odds being a highly desirable and very good looking individual, oh, this guy, you can't guarantee you can get a royal to tie the knot. That's a fact! If you're a one of the Victoria's Secret models that Prince Wenceslas likes to date, go for it. But there's a much easier and reliable way to assume the throne. Murder. Nope, read it wrong. Cold hard cash. But before you start saving your pennies, know this. Very few royal titles can actually be sold. A 1925 British law made it illegal to buy and sell royal titles. Breaking this law can result in up to two years in prison. That's it for trying to just like, here's power, two years? You're not even gonna go to jail because you're the one making the rules. But there are some exceptions, and that's why you're here. <laughs> the British title of Lord of the Manor is one of those exceptions, and is the most common title you can find for sale, ranging from one to $10,000. However, being a Lord of the Manor isn't technically royalty, as the title has no legal benefits or special privileges. It's just rad. Even the manor you purchase can be essentially worthless to the modern day legal system. There's also the Scottish Lairdships. These Lairdships go for around $30 and give you a tiny plot of land land is sweet. However, these plots are often subdivided from a much larger piece of land, meaning there are multiple layers of the same piece of land. Multiple layers of land. Multiple lands of layers. When countless other people share your royal title, it just isn't that prestigious. The real title you want to buy is a Scottish feudal barony. Since 2004, it is legal to purchase the title of a Scottish baron as well as an earl and a marquise. What's a marquise? Unfortunately, because these are officially recognized royal titles, expect to pay a pretty penny. Pretty penny is a phrase for a lot of money, not just one singular pretty penny. <laughs> That'd be a dumb phrase. A Scottish Baron title can cost up to $75,000 or more, and finding someone willing to part with their royalty is rare. But they are out there, and if you can fork over the cash, royalty is yours. But, ooh, be careful. There are a lot of fake titles out there. Before you make any purchase, it's best to consult with a lawyer. So. What do you get with your fancy new title? Since it's an actual royal title, you can legally put it on your passport, and that'll really impress those TSA agents. You sly dog, you. You sly royal dog, you. You also have the ability to pass that title down to your children when you die. That's dope. That's a royal inheritance. And maybe the coolest thing of all, you can petition the Scottish government to send you an actual coat of arms. That's right! You get a crest and a motto and everything. Put it up on a flag in front of your house, or get it as a back tattoo. 
right above that butterfly. It's your coat of arms. But before you get drunk with power, know that this title doesn't grant you a seat in parliament, nor does it give you any land. In fact, due to the abolition of Heritable Jurisdictions Act of 1746, Scottish barons have no legal power or authority whatsoever. But hey, that coat of arms is friggin' sweet. Conclusion, you're nobility now. Get out there and hobnob with the rich and the famous at like charity dinners and tennis matches and charity tennis matches. Let's just hope no one actually ever needs you to do anything of importance. Because we all know your capabilities. This has been Epic Out 2! Let us know what topic you guys think we should break down next in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.